What is up Choratics? So in this video I wanted to make a review giving my thoughts and honest opinions about the new Drug Wars DLC for GTA Online. And before we start, I do want to mention that I'm sure the majority of Rockstar's team is working very hard on GTA 6, and that's probably why this DLC is not as good as past updates, but at the end of the day, this is a multi-billion dollar company, and there's a severe lack of quality control and rushed content in this update. So most of this video will be a bit of a rant, which I normally don't do, but I do think this needs to be said and talked about. So this DLC was first teased on December 6th, and Rockstar claimed it was going to be a massive multi-part update, which got the majority of the community very excited. Three days later, another newswire was posted clarifying it's a two-part update slash story, which they should have just said from the beginning, but still very promising. So fast forward to day one of a DLC, we log in and we see a total of five vehicles on the websites, pretty underwhelming. We then complete the six new first dose missions, which the majority of the community has agreed. Most of them are pretty boring, except for the last two that are somewhat entertaining. And then we unlock the new Freak Shop warehouse, which is where our Brickade 6x6 Acid Lab is stored, which is just a reskin of a vehicle that was already in-game from 2016. And that's pretty much it for Day 1 content. Not really all that great. Now let's discuss the Day 1 cars in a bit more detail. So the first one is the Entity MT, a car that had a lot of potential, but Rockstar just decided to take the old Entity XXR from 2018 and reskin it with pretty much the same handling files and annoying slow handling flags, which makes it go slower over bumps and just an overall terrible driving experience. And in terms of the details, it has normal opening doors, an engine model from the original 2013 Grotti Cheetah, an overused copy-paste high-pitched exhaust note, really the only saving grace of this car is its customization and styling, but everything else is just terrible. And believe it or not, the Entity XXR and the new Entity MT without HSW are slower around a track than the original Entity XF from 2013. It really is annoying and truly a massive flop on Rockstar's part. I thought we were done with this handling flag garbage. It's quite clear that Rockstar doesn't test these cars before they release them, because if they did, they would catch these things. It's just a massive lack of quality control. Now let's move on to the next car, shall we? The Anis 300R. This is arguably the best car from a DLC, I'm not gonna lie, I, I do like it a lot. The only issue I've personally found on it was that in first person, the steering wheel was off-center, as you can see, kind of off to the left, which honestly is not too big of a deal, but again, lack in quality control. Continuing to the Tulip M100, based on the 4th gen Chevy Malibu, Yes, it's sort of cool, but honestly, who really wanted this over a Fox body Mustang, for example? I'm pretty sure the community would have preferred the Mustang a lot more, but anyways, in terms of the details of the M100, everything seems to be pretty good with this car, except that when you install the exposed turbo grill upgrade, they don't actually show in the engine bay. A bit of an oversight there. Next up, we have the Journey 2. A vehicle I personally got really excited for when I saw the leaks the day before the DLC. I was thinking about the endless customization this thing was going to have. I mean, I was like, wow, this is going to be really good for customization. A lot of fun to customize, especially the interior. And then we actually got it in game. And all it has for visual customization is some liveries, wheel options, internal performance mods, and that's it. I mean, really Rockstar? Are we in 2022 or 2013? I <laughs> really don't understand. There could have been tons of interior customization for this thing, but that didn't happen. Moving along to the Surfer Custom, a car that has custom in its name, but it's not a Benny's vehicle when it really should have been. This thing has some decent exterior upgrades and liveries, but again, no interior customization. Which, I mean, in real life, the main highlight of these VW buses is crazy interiors. Another missed opportunity on Rockstar's part. 
If they were going to do that, they should have just added customization to the old surfer instead of making us spend 500k on a new one. Continuing, we have the Brickade 6x6, aka the Acid Lab. This is probably the best vehicle from the DLC with actual good customization, of course the Acid Lab, tons of armor, it really is a great vehicle. But honestly, I really feel they should have made a new vehicle model for this. I know some people say that they don't mind, but I mean, I get so many comments on my videos saying that they bought the Brick Age from the Warstock website and then they can't upgrade it. I'm just sitting there like, oh god, it's just a bit confusing and lazy on Rockstar's part, if I'm being honest. However, you basically get it for free after you complete the six story mission, so honestly I can't really complain too much even though you still gotta pay for the Acid Lab, but probably the best vehicle from the DLC, all things considering. And lastly, we have the Manchester Scout C, which basically comes with the Brigade 6x6. Nothing really too special about this one, it's basically just the same Manchester Scout that's now used for delivery missions, with the letter C added to the name for whatever reason. I guess Rockstar couldn't think of a name, so they just said, yeah, I just slapped the letter C on it. They could have slapped the letter D on it for delivery. I don't know. It did. <laughs> Very random. Now, let's talk about the drip feed content. So, we have 11 total vehicles for this DLC, even though it's technically 9, as the last two are vehicles that already exist in game, and they're just adding them to a website. And yes, some of these cars are cool, but are any of these vehicles in here, besides the Lotus, cars that the community actually wanted and has been suggesting for Rockstar to add? I don't think so. And for reference, let's compare this to the drip feed from the last DLC, and it really, really shows what going downhill looks like. I mean, <laughs> if they're actually going to put the effort into making some of these cars, why not give the community cars they actually have been wanting for a while? I mean, the main reference to this DLC is Breaking Bad, right? So why didn't we get a new PMP 600 based on Walter White's Chrysler 300, for example, or his Pontiac Aztec? I mean, these would have been great additions. And let's not talk about the other dozens of vehicles they could have added. I mean, there's so many, the Miata, the Evo 8, I mean, it just goes on and on. But anyways, moving along to the drip feed weapons, we have three new ones coming, which are a pistol that's going to be completely useless. The railgun from 2013 that we're finally going to be able to buy, which used to be completely overpowered and we weren't able to buy it. But with how broken online PvP is currently, Rockstar just said screw it. <laughs> and lastly, a candy cane melee weapon for the holidays, which honestly this one is pretty cool, I don't mind this one. Now continuing, we also have a massive 50 car garage coming, even though it's just 5, 10 car garages mashed up into one building, but still more car space nonetheless, always nice to see. However, Rockstar decided to drift feed this garage that we need for more space for next year. I, I That's completely unnecessary, and it forced many car collectors like myself to sell other cars to make room for the new ones in the DLC, which really makes no sense. And lastly, we have the taxi business, which seems promising, but all you do is walk up to the Cabco building, and then it spawns you outside in a taxi, tells you to go pick up a person, drop them off at a destination, and you get paid mediocre funds. I guess this is probably <laughs> tailored more towards players who like role-playing and stuff like that, but for the majority of the community, I don't think anyone is going to play this again after trying it for the first time. And let's not forget about Rockstar nerfing the Kyle Perico heist again, because players are obviously making too much money with it and should buy shark cards instead. <laughs> now let's talk about the second part of this massive two-part update as Rockstar claimed. PC users who dug into the game code were actually able to figure out that the second part of this DLC is actually already in this update. The second part of the story is just locked behind drip feed. So we will not be getting a second downloadable update for this DLC or any more drip feed cars than what we already saw. Just some new missions which will be called Last Dose. And I've already seen some of the leaked gameplay of it, and no spoilers here, but it's not all that great. It's just as small and underwhelming as the six first dose missions. So with that, we can clearly see that the team at Rockstar who made this DLC were either given a very small time frame to work on it, and that's why it feels a bit rushed in a lot of aspects, 
or they were just a bit lazy and just didn't really care all that much, but I really hope it's the first one. <laughs> so I would rate this DLC a solid 5 out of 10. Let me know what you guys think in the comments and how you would rate this update and if you agree with some of my arguments, but that's kind of my take there. A lot of rushed items, broken items, lack of effort in some items, um, and the story that's just not all that great. Again, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Obviously, opinions vary, but I think we can all agree that this is nowhere near as good as past DLCs. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.